uncertainty. And a lot of anger. People are angry and unhappy. I believe that people of faith should be the ones who are more grounded and don't fly off the handle so quickly. I also would argue the point that I believe that many people who are unhappy are that way because they're not doing what they were created to do. Fulfillment is in purpose. They're just simply not doing what they were created to do. I believe that much of the Spirit's work in our lives, not all of it, but much of it, is expressed in fruit. The fruit that is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. These are the fruit that we are supposed to be bearing. Verse 22. But the Holy Spirit, reading from the NLT, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, <coughs> faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. These fruit greatly impact the emotional quality of a person's life. Joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, patience, self-control. <coughs> I think that's a part of our lives that somewhat is often neglected. Beyond the saving of our souls, it is probably our greatest need. The need that Jesus meets in our lives. Amen? Amen. I have learned that one of the keys to improving the, improving the emotional quality of a person's life is to grab hold <coughs> of entitlement, arrest it. And gratitude is the antidote to entitlement. And I think we all wrestle with entitlement just a little bit. Lord, this shouldn't be happening to me now. I've been faithful. I should not be doing this now. That, my family, is a joy marvel. Do you hear me? That is a joy marvel. We can choose to focus on the things God hasn't done in our lives, or we can make a commitment to be grateful for the things that God has done. Amen. And if we choose to do that, we will be healthier and happier. Amen? Amen? Yes. So this morning, I want you to reflect on the goodness of God in your life. If you want to look for bad, you can always see it. Right. It's there. Yes, you but choose to celebrate and reflect 
on the goodness. Because in spite of all that may be going wrong, God has been good to every single person in this world. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. And if you look around and get caught up, you can forget that. And think that there's only turmoil and trouble. And in the midst of all of that, God is still good. God is good, family. Even if you are a person of faith, yet, <laughs> what you may call luck or coincidence or good fortune, for us as believers, is still just common grace. It is still God. God looking out for you and me even when we don't consider Him. You see, grace is still grace, whether you think it's grace or not. What you think don't change it. God is faithful, and He's consistent. Yes, God is good. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come today with hearts filled with gratitude and thanksgiving, reflecting on your goodness. Yes. Grateful for who you are and what you have done. You've blessed us all week. And we pause in this moment, this morning, with our gratitude. And we bless you, Father. We speak well of you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and what you continue to do. We even thank you right now for what you're about to do. I pray for those that are here who came with cares and burdens. Your word instructs us to cast our cares on you, for you care for us. I pray as a result of our time together today, people will leave this place lighter. You said you would give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You said those that sow in tears will reap in joy. May it be for those of us who are in this room this morning. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this day. We ask that you add your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I would like to touch again on the fact that God wants us to be good stewards. I think this is very important not only of our time, but also of our talents and gifts. When we look at the chaos in the world today, we were born for such a time as this. I know some people say, <laughs> I don't believe that. But we were born for such a time as this. We were born to solve some of the world's problems. 
God gifted you with something to bring to answer a problem. It has always been God's intention that we make full use of our gifts, talents, and whatever acquired skills we may get. God doesn't waste anything. And he doesn't want us to waste anything. And that includes our gifts and our talents. I believe that the graveyard is filled with unfulfilled potential. Where there is unfulfilled potential, there is unrealized purpose. Because God gives every person potential. Everybody can do something. Do you all have any family? Amen. That is why we need to see ourselves through God's eyes and not through the eyes of people. Because people can say things and make you think you're nothing when you don't know who you are. Amen? God don't waste nothing. And he don't want us to waste anything. He doesn't waste your tears. He doesn't waste your mistakes. He doesn't waste your trials and your tragedies. And he doesn't want us to waste anything either, including our potential. You've heard me say many times that purpose is the reason for the creation of the existing existence of thing. And purpose is also an answer to a problem. You and I are answers to problems. We are answers to somebody's prayers. And we need to realize that when we come into the kingdom. We are here for each other. Isn't it ironic that believers are supposed to be known for their love for each other? You know, you can get so caught up with the stuff that's going on, you can forget that. We're supposed to love one another. There's a song that plays on the radio that says, When did hate get so ordinary? <laughs> and we accept it so easily. Oh, that's just... When someone creates something, they're answering a problem. When someone created light, they were answering a darkness problem. When they created medicine, they were answering a sickness problem. When transportation was created, it was answering a transportation problem. When we were created, we were not problems. We were created to solve problems. Amen? Amen? So when your potential is not reached and your purpose is not fulfilled, then there are problems on the earth that we need the next generation to solve. That means that there are Goliaths that they are going to have to deal with that we should have slayed. Think about it. Not attempting to become our best self not only robs the world of your contribution, but it also robs you of internal fulfillment. Because true fulfillment is in purpose. 
A gentleman by the name of Abraham Maslow quoted, if you plan on being anything less than you are capable of being, you will probably be unhappy most days of your life. <laughs> if you plan on being anything less than you are capable of being, you will probably be unhappy most days of your life. In a sermon that I preached some time back, I asked the question, what separates those who are fully fruitful in their lives from those who aren't besides the grace of God? And the answer I found after studying the scriptures in many, many, going through many, many books was Courage. Courage. The greatest exploits are not done by the most gifted, but by the most courageous. Because there are people who have gifts, but they're afraid to use them. Are you all happy, family? You have something, but if you're not courageous enough to use it, it's not benefiting the body. Mm. Remember Joshua? What did God tell Joshua when he was taken over from Moses? The responsibility of Israel. He didn't, he didn't tell him, right, to be gifted. Because he was already gifted. He didn't tell him to be talented. He was already talented. He didn't tell him to be anointed. He was already anointed. But what did he tell him, Brother Lewis? Be strong with good courage. That is what he said. He said, be courageous. Whoever, God's, whoever God appoints, he equips. And if you feel that God has spoken to your spirit about something, don't allow your own doubts if you know that God has spoken to you, to stop you because whatever you need to accomplish what God has called you to do is already in you. It's already there. We just have to have faith that God is who he says he is and that he will do what he says. He will do. Faith is important, family. Are you all hearing me this morning? Yeah. Faith is important. He told Joshua, be courageous. Be strong. In other words, I have already placed on the inside of you everything you need to carry out the role I am calling you to. But be careful of the enemy, because he can inhibit your effectiveness by causing you to doubt. And that is why we have to hold on to our faith in God. Because God wants us about the enemy, you know. He calls him the father of what? And we take that very lightly because, oh, Slewfoot? He could paint a picture so good that while you holding on to God's word, you're still looking at what he's saying and thinking about it, saying, mm -hmm. Mighty God can give you his word. You got the word. But you're listening to the picture. 
Yes, sir. Satan influenced one third, that's 33 percent of the angels of heaven. He persuaded them to, to side with him. Yes, he did. But look what he did to Eve <laughs> in the garden. Can you imagine? What you can't put. I mean, you can't put. Being in such close proximity to God that you walk with him <laughs> in the cool of the day. That's the kind of relationship you had with the creator. Listening to him daily. And when the enemy came to her, she said to him, well, he did say we shouldn't eat of this tree. And still he was able to paint a picture to her. He said, okay, he's just trying to keep you away from being like him. We must believe, have faith, God to believe that he will do what he says he will do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And he is who he says he is. <coughs> yes. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is important. Hmm. I want us to consider this morning what it says in Hebrews 11, 6. I know somebody knows that off my heart, so I'll say it. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must what? First must believe exists. that he exists. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yes. That must be an absolute. <laughs> Are you all here in your family? Amen. The enemy, be careful, can inhibit your effectiveness by causing you not to be courageous when God is saying, do not fear, be of good courage. Why do you think he said it if he, it wasn't necessary for him to say? Because he knows there's something that out there to deter you. That's right. He will actually convince you to walk away from something that I have already given you. Wow. <laughs> and make you think that you don't have what it takes to endure to walk in it. And I didn't say to you, I, God, who cannot lie, <laughs> the Almighty, it is yours. The enemy whispering in, you don't have what it takes. You don't dress right. Your hair ain't the right color. Your shoe ain't right. You got on the wrong belt. No, we laugh at these things. That's the kind of stuff he's throwing us. He will actually tell you something and you'll consider it. After God, then give it to you and says it's yours. He told Jeremiah, I I you what I found in your mother woman, I gave you what you needed. I have plans for you. And I put it in you. We are not mistakes. And that is why in this turbulent time that we live, we're supposed to be here. And we have in us, from God, what it takes to endure this and still live the abundant life that Jesus has already died for. The fruit of the Spirit is there. But the world has such a hold. And we listen to the world more than the world. Than the world. And when the Bible says walk by faith, stop moving by what you see. That's where God wants us. 
Because too many people say, God, I need you to show me before I do anything. And God says, I need you to do something and I'll show you. Do it. Can you imagine the children of Israel that said to Moses, no, we ain't going. And even when they decided to trust him because he was the man of God, all the way walking to the river, they saw the water. <laughs> Amen? And if you look at the water, and in your humanness say, now, what in the world are you telling now? Huh? <laughs> but when you trust God, it ain't about what you see. It's about who you serve. Because if your steps are ordered, then go where you say you to go and watch him by the waters for you. Amen. Want to say nothing but a thing for him? Faith is important. Courage. Family, the greatest expression of courage is seen on the cross. Courage is the ultimate expression of faith and Jesus. Death on the cross was not just an expression of love, but also an expression of his faith in the Father. <coughs> so the cross teaches us the importance of not just having faith in Jesus, but it also teaches us that in order for us to live our best self, we got to have the faith like Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Jesus' willingness to go to the cross expressed his faith. Mm -hmm. Courage looks like faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is courage. Courage is faith. And Jesus, throughout Scripture, modeled this for us. Let's turn our Bibles to Mark. Mark chapter 5. I want to read a little story, a very familiar story. I think it's just scary. And I want to refer to this to make my point. Mark chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verse 21. It says, Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake, where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jarius, arrived. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him. And all the people following, followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I could just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched but he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell on her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. This woman was sick for 12 years trying to find help for her condition. 
and nothing could help her. Then one day she heard Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And Jesus was in a huge crowd. And they were following him. But she said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She didn't say, I need to touch him. She believed that if she only touched his garment, she would be made whole. If I could just touch his garment, I will be made whole. This is why church is so important. This is why being here today is important. Because sometimes it feels very hard and it feels like you're not getting through to Jesus. But when you can't get through to him, maybe you can get through to somebody who is touching you. Amen? Mm -hmm. See, when your faith is low, somebody else's faith may be high. When you are running on empty, somebody else may be running on full. And sometimes, just being with them, seeking out them, will help. Amen? Amen? The Bible says she pressed her way through the crowd and touched his garment. Jesus asked him, touch me. The disciple says, touch you. Everybody touching you. How can you ask this question? Who touched you? Jesus said, no. You know, some place says, I felt virtue burn me. <coughs> In other words, faith feels different. Are you all hearing me finally? Faith feels different. Everybody was doing the same thing. But when she did it with faith, <coughs> she got a completely different result. Because faith feels different. Jesus said to her in verse 34, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. I want to remind you this morning, family, that faith is important. Very important. You may be here this morning dealing with something in your life. I challenge you to reach out in faith and touch Jesus. Many people struggle with their faith in God. Trying to believe that He is who He says He is and that He will do what He says He will do. I like to read the story of Sarah when it comes to that. Because he teaches us in that story. Remember Sarah? 90 years old. And she was promised to be what? The mother of nations. She was 90. And she was struggling believing that at that age, she was going to have a baby. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Doris laughed. Yeah, she she had a problem. She was struggling believing that she could have a baby. This is how God helped her handle her doubt. Not by stopping her from asking questions, but by teaching her the right question to ask. He said to Sarah, is anything too hard for God? That's the right question. Is anything too hard for God? The question isn't, can you have a baby at 90? The question is, is anything too hard for God? 
Because when you ask a question, can somebody have a baby at 90, that will bring you to one conclusion. But when you ask the question, is there anything too hard for God, that brings you to a whole different conclusion. <laughs> Amen? Amen? It isn't about can he do it. It's about is there anything too hard for him to do. It isn't about can he restore what I've lost in my life. It's about is there anything too hard for God. So you may be here this morning. Things don't seem to be going right in the right direction in your life. It seems your world is turning upside down. You're trying to figure out what to do next. You may even feel like a failure. You stop dreaming big. Or you're settled for an inferior vision. You know, and I've experienced this in life myself. I'm talking from experience. Sometimes you don't really know something is gone until you reach for it and it's not there. The Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Sometimes the enemy doesn't kill. And sometimes the enemy doesn't destroy. But sometimes he steals from us. It's possible for us to go through certain seasons and circumstances in our lives. And we survive them. But the enemy didn't send that to kill you or destroy you. But it robbed us of something. Yes, we came out, but we left something there, <coughs> and we need to get it back. The enemy can steal your optimism, your joy, your peace. Yes, we can go through some <coughs> situations in our lives, and it takes something from us. I know, I've been there. And because we have to survive, <laughs> are you all here, every family? We make it through. We push and we make it through. But we never really realize how winded we are and how much that situation has taken from us until we get into another situation and we reach for something that we had and we realize. We left it back there, in that disappointment, in that hurt. So we don't pray big no more. We pray safe prayers. Because we're wounded and we don't want to get hurt no more. We don't want that disappointment anymore. Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, we need to talk about things because you may think you're the only one going through this. You're not. But we have a God who is faithful. And if we trust Him in faith, He can restore. He can bring back our joy. That we think big once again. Amen? Stop me from asking God for big things. Pray safe. Believing safe. Small. Don't want to be disappointed anymore. But family, this morning I want you to know that Jesus knows what you need. Amen? And if you'll ask him in faith, he will restore. He did it for me. And I know he can do it for you. But you gotta reach out. This is not about what you see. But it's about believing in God. And believing that there's nothing too hard for him 
to do. Are you all hearing me, family? Hurt is a serious thing. Disappointment. And we come to those things. And it's so easy, you know, because in all situations that we go through, we like to plan how we want to see us come through it. <laughs> Are you all hearing me this morning? And if you tell me that you don't, the truth is not in you. <laughs> Anytime you see, you get the situation, you have a plan. Yes, we are supposed to go to God and say, God, order my steps. Work this out for me. Right then you're telling God how you want it done. All right or wrong? <laughs> how many of us drop on our knees and say, God, you do it the way you want it done? Looking over there at that car. Yeah. That car. And then you look at your finances. And then you get a lease. But God you do it the way you need it. You need you need it to be done. <laughs> or you say, God, I need another job. You need to open the door for me to get another job. And that's telling God how to do it? No. But we need to trust God. Amen? We need to trust God. We all have a plan. And it's so easy to get disappointed when it don't work out the way we want it to work out. And guess who like that? Old slew for here we come. See? Praying he ain't give you what you want. He ain't listening to you. He ain't listening to you. In fact, he don't even want you to have that. Now your mind all twist up. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? You may have a family situation, marital situation, I mean all sorts of things. These are things that we live with and we go through. And hurt is a serious thing. And nobody wants to get hurt over and over and over again. And people don't always act right. People don't always do what they're supposed to do. And I've said many, many times, when someone's dysfunction crosses your path, what is your responsibility? But because of that, the optimism is gone. The peace is gone. The joy is gone. The next time you ask a person a question, there's a little doubt in when they answer you. Mm, yeah, well, that's what you said last time. <laughs> I don't really know if I can believe you to do it this time. <laughs> we family cannot take God out of the equation. Amen? Amen? We have to believe that God has our best interest in heart and that we're going to trust Him for our lives. So I'm telling you this morning that faith is important and we need to believe that God is who He says He is and He will do what He says He will do. Amen? Amen. I want to pray for you this morning. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now for those who have gone through some kind of injury, tragedy, trial, difficult circumstance that has taken their joy, their passion for wanting and seeking your best for their lives. Some people don't even believe that your best is possible for them anymore. I pray now in the name of Jesus, you give them back what the enemy stole from them their hope, their joy, their peace, their faith. I pray they once again believe you are an incredible God who is capable of doing incredible things. And that as they trust you in faith, 
that they will step into their best season. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you touch the bodies of those that are sick among our number. Continue to bring healing to them. I pray that God that you can continue to provide where provisions are needed. Father, you are the great I am. You be whatever they need you to be. I pray this in Jesus' name because I know that you care for us. I pray for this country, the leaders of this country, the leaders of our communities, the leaders in the churches, the leaders in our homes, schools, that we will all seek you for wisdom. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing this prayer. And I believe in faith that you will answer according to your will for our lives. And we thank you and bless you now in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 I'd like to give an opportunity right now for anyone that may want to accept Jesus Christ, who may not know Him in the part of their sins, you can come to know Him right now. It's not a big deal. Just ask Him to come into your heart. The lights are not going to turn out. Not going to hear no fun. <laughs> it's a simple thing. Ask him to come into your heart and he will. Mm -hmm. To forgive you for your sins. Repent. Make a commitment to turn around and get into God's word and learn of him. Learn how he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. What he wants you to do and what he doesn't want you to do. Amen? Amen? Someone may be in a backslidden position. <coughs> so, <coughs> come back <coughs> home. Ask him to forgive you, dust your feet off, and move forward. And do better. Amen? Amen. That's what it's all about. Don't waste an opportunity because after all, that is why you're here. It's another opportunity to get right with God. Amen? Amen. So praise God for all of you. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Sometimes we just need to hear some things to remind us. Because it's, it's not that you don't know you know. But sometimes you could get buff up and hit upside your head, push around so much, stuff tend to go in the back. And then God got people that need to put it back forward. <laughs> Amen? Remind you who you are. Because the enemy will make you forget. He'll take your identity from you if you let him. These things that are happening around us, let them roll off your back. Amen? Amen? And like I said the week before I left, don't forget the prize. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Don't forget there is a heaven. Yes. And spending time with God. Can you imagine? This will be going to us a joke. Every day we'll be worshiping him and praising him. And this old crippled sick body will be gone. No more coughing and can't go up a flight of steps before you need oxygen. Seriously. This will be gone. 
I got a whole on to get up now. And I'm a young man. <laughs> but I got a new body waiting on me. And I ain't gonna let the enemy make me forget that because he's trying to stroke struggles in my way. I can crawl if I got to, but I will make it in. Amen? Amen. 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 So don't let the enemy take from you what God has promised you. Fight to hold on Amen. to what God is worth fighting for. Because there's definitely someone trying to take it. Amen? Amen. Come on, put your hands again to get God to pray. Faith is important, family. Very important. You gotta believe. Yep. You gotta believe. Yes, ma'am. Can I read this verse um, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39? Yes. It says, But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and keep their souls. Amen. 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 I always say we do ourselves an injustice when we don't read the word of God. This will keep you. Amen. Amen. This will keep you on the right track. We, we get so consumed with other things that we hear. We must be intentional in countering it with the word of God. Amen. Just that simple verse that she just read just now. We don't shrink back. Amen. It's the word of God. So remember that faith is important. 